Round 5 of the National Rally Championship is brought to you by Petrofuel, Triple L Plant Hire, Toyota Gazoo Racing and the MTO Group. Hi, my name is Brendan Kelly. You're joining us for rounds five and six of the National Rally Championships and rounds three and four of the Petrofuel Regional Rally Championships in a very, very windy and rainy Jeffreys Bay. The car's heading into town for the customary street parade. We caught up with a couple of drivers before the start. It's, it's a new challenge again for us and it's the same for everyone, but uh, we're just looking to have a good clean weekend and uh, I guess bring back some more points. The stages look awesome, so yeah, we're looking forward to tackling it in the four-wheel drive. Roads very good, but yeah, it's technical, so um, if you're not uh, cautious, there's going to be trouble, for sure. Butterflies going, but uh, the roads are stunning here in PE. Weather's a little bit miserable, but we can't wait to, to attack it. Some spots are a bit rough, other spots are actually quite nice. Uh, you, you have to keep your wits about you. Uh, there are sections where you can get sucked into it. Last couple of years haven't been good for us at the Ago National, but we love Longmore Forest and looking forward to it. The Toyota had other ideas with us, so unfortunately we didn't make it in the Toyota, but, um, but the Datsun is, is ready. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The, the forest and the Datsun is always good fun. Yeah. Clock of the course, start. William Lowe with final instructions and roll call to a somewhat nervous looking group of competitors. The weather conditions and the daunting drop offs in the forest add into the anticipated action. Benjamin Hubbock and Barry White were the first car off in their magnificent VW Polo 270 four wheel drive two litre turbo, and an early mistake from them sees them turn right instead of left and lose a bit of time. Next up would be John O'Van Bake and local lass Ingrid G. Cox in one of two four-wheel drive 2.0-litre turbo Toyota Gazoo Racing Starlets. The impressive sound in 1600cc four-wheel drive turbo charged Mazda 2 would see Matt Kohler join in seasoned campaigner Chris Kutzer for their first rally together. Mike Ladekana and Kes Naidu in the second of the four-wheel drive Toyota Gazoo Starlets would make the same mistake as Habich and White made earlier but a broken side shaft would leave them with just front wheel drive of their car. Lots of support for the local Algoa Rally Club stars Niels Fosler and Rikas Fouri in their Hellebach VW Polo 250 1600. They got off to a great start. Leon Kretzmann and Jason Schreiber make their national rally debut in the X Guy Bottrell Toyota Etios 1600 and tackle their first stage rather cautiously. The husband and wife team of Anton and Isabel Roths in their Pretoria North back Toyota Runex would be the next car off in the rather chilly and wet windy conditions. The first of the rear wheel drive cars would be Oliver DeMunn and standing navigator Lloyd Brady and they tackle the slippery roads in their Toyota Corolla E70 2 litre. Third be followed by Western Province Rally Champions Owen Jones and Aidan Grienkamp in their distinctive sound in 2 litre turbocharged Zabaru Impreza four wheel drive and they make the same mistake missing that left 90. Teammates in the second of the four wheel drive Zabarus Warren Schultz and David Stichling would follow suit missing that critical left turn. Nick Davidson and Ashley Besate note in the Stu Davidson and Sons one litre turbocharged VW Polo 250 attacked from the outset. They would be followed by the classic 2-litre Datsun P510 Triple S Coupe with Jody von Zumeren behind the wheel and James Johnson in the navigator's seat. The brother and sister team of Ross and Roxanne Bartle in their Indy Oil 2-litre VW Polo 250 were off to a flying start and would be wanting to keep their good form of late going. Next up would be defending Elgo Rally Club champions, the husband and wife team of Jean and Taryn van Royen. They were battling with a slight misfire, which would see them finish 16th in the stage. Let's go on board with Jean-Dre Marais and his girlfriend Tegan Talyard in their Motel and Automotive Performance Solutions sponsored VW Polo 250 1600. Marais has performed a miracle in getting his car rebuilt in just over three weeks after a high speed roll in the previous round. Former SA drifting champion Wade van Zumeren along with seat hopping navigator Henry Adams were out in the border towing 2 litre turbocharged four wheel drive VW Polo 250 for the very first time. Next up would be the father and daughter team of Johan and Yerne Fulyun in their newly branded Has Petroleum VW Polo 250 2 litre. Celebrating 40 years of rallying in style with the Datsun Triple S 2 litre are Etienne Malherba and Patrick Vermark who would certainly keep the many spectators entertained with their sideways action. 
They'd be followed by Western Province visitors Rupert van Sale and Justin Gray in a VW Polo A13. And they were yet another team to make the same mistake. Well-known Group N racer Des Tim paired up with Morris Brown in the Dirt Africa Subaru Legacy after having recently replaced the engine that was destroyed in the opening round of the Petri Fuel Algoa Rally Club Championship. Herman Bernhardt and Greg Hines set off in the Potenza Oil Classic 2-litre Mark II Ford Escort. The third of the husband and wife pairings are Ruan and Chanel Fantonde in their JBM Body Works VW Polo, both of them being very accomplished dirt oval racers. Francois Vermark and André van Stolkweg came out with guns blazing in their VW Polo Golf A1. They are the first of the three Daniel Pinot Technical High School entries. Guido Stein and Mark Irvine in yet another classic Ford Escort Mark II 2 liter, another of the rear wheel drive escorts that has really become a crowd favorite. On board we go with the father and son pair of Martin Kleinfeld Senior and Junior in the immaculately prepared Toyota Corolla KE35 1600. The second of the Daniel Pinar Technical High School entries, a VW Polo 1 litre of school pupil Winley Martin alongside teacher Kalen Kapp. Making their rally debut and driving a 1600cc Toyota Conquest backed by Ocean Truck Sales are ex-dirt oval racing champion Brent Barnard with karting champion Cameron Kelly. The last of the cars off would be the third Daniel Pinar entry, the VW Golf A1 1400 driven by schoolgirl Cashney Waite with teacher Wesley Schultz. The national results of stage one are as follows with Havik and White recovering from that first corner mistake and Jean-Dre Marais and Keegan Talyard shoot to the top of the regional leaderboard in their new polo. Stage two of the Algoa Rally coming up after the break. Decent looking place. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So today Larry and I are on a bit of a road trip. Is it okay if we have a look at some cars? He started going on about he hasn't bought a car recently and he's got a little bit bored with the cars he's got. So she seems to be in half decent shape, you know, and it's a fun little car to drive around. Oh, this is okay. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. And that says, well, let's go do some shopping. I think you should buy this one. Maybe I will. It came across Platinum, and it's a great dealership. Oh, it's nice and comfortable. You look good in that. Dave is the one to discover this place, and I'm very impressed, and I'm very happy, happy we came here. Okay, we'll put this one on the list. Um, what list? The, you're not keeping a list? I'm not keeping a list. It's your... Well, somebody has to keep a your list. your shopping. And into the Longball Forest we go. The wind in the forest had certainly intensified. We caught up with the drivers after the stage. We're slowly, slowly getting the feel of the car, understanding the grip levels a bit better. Um, you know, I think the road's a little bit tricky sometimes to your own reference. So, yeah, we'll see what times the other guys do and then uh, sort of regroup now at uh, service and see how hard we need to push for the next couple of stages. Yeah, I can say we're getting into the flow of it. Um, as usual, J-Bay's got the best stages in the country. Um, that stage is beautiful, well prepped. The, the guys did a really great job on, on this rally so far. First real stage, so just taking it easy, getting a feel for everything. You know, we didn't have a shakedown or anything down here, so this is the real t first time to drive the car, new navigator, so can't push too many dangers. We think there's something bit of power missing, but uh, otherwise good. Good stage, clean stage. Um, yeah, so we, uh, we'll look forward to the next, next one. Yeah, from, yeah from, from stage one, we're going to have front wheel drive, so it's not ideal in this car, so we're trying to make it back to service, and uh, let's see what we can do. We clearly lost a lot of time, and I guess we're just going to be playing the catch-up game from now on. a flat tire to start off there by controls and then uh, I think we were just all up and up and then we just pushed it for everything it was worth it was loose but it was good Yeah, nee, it was not so erg as we thought it was so uh, I think the rest of the day was very good the condition is very mooi. so alles is good 
Yeah. It was quite lucky. Oh, the car is lacking sideways at the moment, but um, just getting into things now. Lacking navigator. Uh, he's pushing me a little bit. I'm scared. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that stage was uh, it was quite hectic. Uh, very tough on the car. Um, but you have to expect that with the rains that we had here, uh, the teams did a great, great effort to sort the roads out. Had a fast section here at the end, and yeah, it got me a bit shaky. It's first time out here, it's daunting. Um, yeah, you've got to be very committed, eh? So, yeah, we pushed as hard as we could for, for that stage, but uh, there's always improvement. Swapping the uh, four-wheel drive for a little two-wheel two drive, how's it gone? Uh, I'm finding my feet slowly but surely, but uh, having no drive on the back is, uh, is, 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 is different. So you've got to keep it powered and obviously with the turbocharged, you've got to keep it in the boost. So, yeah, but we'll find our feet. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, I just needed to get more confidence again in the car because we had lots of problems, but I think we've got, uh, got it near the end. And four left and double caution, turn right to cube, hairpin over rocks, no cut, no cut, 170, 170. This, this first stage this morning was well, this afternoon was so short that we didn't really get a feel for anything and it felt pretty good in there, so yeah, we'll see what the rest of the rally holds. Yeah, the road conditions are awesome. I think, you know, the little bit of rain we had made the, you know, the soil nice and loamy, so plenty of grip yards. It's actually very lucky to drive. It was going all right, and uh, uh, about the last five kilometers, I think something's come loose on the car, so the steering wheel's gone, uh, got us all over the show. So we took it easier the last five, about the five kilometers, so we're gonna just check what's gone wrong. It was very awesome. Uh, the stage was great, not too wet, not too dry, everything was fine. Amazing. The new gel makes him very fun. It's a bit, a bit rough in places with this old car on some of the fast stuff. You really got to keep it together. It's, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Done well now. Um, overshooting stage one a little bit, but um, I'm sure we're making some time back now. All done. We had a bit of a problem before we started stage one. We had a wall plug that had a leak, so we managed to put some of the magic powder into the radiator and get the leak to stop. So I see the temperatures jumping around on the car, so we nursed it through that stage. But we at the end. We're going to see what we can do at service. Stage is nice. A little bit rough in places, but otherwise good. Awesome, awesome. A little bit rough on some patches, but further on smooth sailing was very good. Very awesome stage, so it's good. Yes, the stages are very nice. Uh, the wetness makes it that it's, uh, that it's uh, traction is very good, so I'm happy. And the car going well? The car's going well, yeah. Rough patches, but uh, for the most part, nice, it's loose. The car's great, there's no problem, so uh, we enjoyed it. It was quite, it was quite amazing. Um, I have to say, I'm, I am quite enjoying myself. Um, I'm not um, gonna take it uh, a bit fast because these roads are, but you know, rough. So I'm just gonna take it slow, you know. Yeah, we're just trying to take it slow and keep the car together and um, finish, finish with the rally. A storming drive from Havik saw him and White winning the 22km stage by 13.6 seconds. Jones and Breton Tumps lead the regional class in their four-wheel drive Subaru. We'll be back after the break with stage three and four of the Elgoa National Rally. Get out, gearheads. The cars are rolling in for Caffeine and Octane, the largest monthly car show in America. Fill up on some coffee, top off the Octane, and head on down. Accurate NSX. Raw, exotic horsepower. 
brand spanking new Aston. V12 by turbo. <laughs> I would call this a uh, Krugersdorp waist style. <laughs> so we love the old school cars and uh, yeah, pretty much a stock body, stock car tech as original as possible. It's always better in a drop top, apparently. It's good for summer. So this car belonged originally the ex mayor of Roryport. There's always time for a quick selfie and it was really encouraging to see how many spectators had taken the Friday afternoon off and headed into the forest to support the rally. Abich and White continue to dominate, set in very quick pace out front. Gono van Beek and Ingrid Gcox having to throw caution to the wind to stay in the hunt. Chris Kutzer and Matt Kohler were starting to gel as a team and had picked up the pace. Slightly off the pace and having lost their rear wheel drive at the start of the rally, Akana and Naidu bravely soldiered on. With their impressive headlights already mounted on the Hella Polo, the local stars Forslu and Furi had found their groove and were certainly going at pace. The Triple L plant hire Toyota Etias of Dion Kretzmann and Jason Schreiber continued to impress as they got to grips with competing in their first national rally. Gauteng based husband and wife team Anton and Isabel Roths and their Pretoria North Polo cautiously working their way through the Longmoor Forest. Another of the spectator favourites is the rear wheel drive ocean truck sales Toyota Corolla of Oliver DeMunn and Lloyd Brady, with the back of the car stepping out a little as they exit the corner. Showing why the four wheel drive Subaru Impreza was the weapon of choice internationally for so long, Owen Jones and Aidan Breton come go through. They'd be followed by Warren Skolson, David Stickling, who would unfortunately crash out at a T junction ending their rally. Some aggressive yet smooth driving from Nick Davidson in the one litre turbocharged Polo. He'd be followed by Jody von Zumeren and James Johnson in the border towing Datsun Coupe, looking like they're in good shape as they go through. Great to see Ross and Roxanne Bartle in their newly branded Indie Oil Polo competing at the highest level once again. The Innova Polo of Sean and Tarrant van Rooyen was still struggling with a misfire that could see them finishing sixth overall in the regional for the stage. The Motel APS Polo of Jean-Dre Marie and Tegan Talyard impressing with their quick times, unfortunately a puncture would slow their progress. Having got their steering rack issues sorted out, Wade von Zumeren and Henry Adams were starting to find their feet in the border towing four-wheel drive Polo. Always strong contenders, Yahan and Yune Fulyun enjoying the fast stages and pushing it to the limit. The distinctive sound of the Datsun Triple S of Etienne Alherba and Patrick Vermark going well as we see deep grooves forming in the roads after being churned up by the four wheel drive cars. Rupert Consale and Justin Gray grew in confidence in the VW Polo A13 and would finish in an impressive seventh overall for the stage in the regional class. The little Ford Escort of Herman Bernhardt and Greg Hine that is affectionately known as Pisang was running consistently and they would end the stage in 13th place. With their sirens wailing, Francois Fermark and Andre van Skalkweek were having a great time leading the club and class and ending the stage in fourth place overall. Unfortunately for Ido Stein and Mark Irvine in the Ford Escort, this would be the last we see of them. Three kilometers before the end of the stage, the car lost all power. The Toyota Corolla of Martin Senior and Junior Kleingeld continue to impress as they take a slightly wider line through the corner to miss the furrows that were forming. Winley Martin attacked the corners aggressively in the Daniel Pinapolo, followed by Brent Barnard and Cameron Kelly in the misfiring conquest. There's Tim and Morris Brown were nursing their alien Subaru legacy along to 15th place finishing the stage. Young lady driver Tashni Wade brings the golf through to finish third in the club and class. We went to the service park to catch up with some of the drivers. It's a challenge with the, the light, um, the sun was coming down so battling to see a little bit some stages but an uh, awesome stage, um, was, was, was fun but tough. We took it easy, we have to get through today. It's important for us to score points, new navigators, so we've got a conservative approach. I think the monkey's off the back. We, we're well into it now and it's going well. Uh, cars performing good. Time for the hella lights to come on. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to light up the night now. 
It was a very good stage for us. Um, Barry's notes were on point, so he didn't miss a beat. Um, we struggled a little bit to find the end of the stage. We, we seem to have missed a, a note page there, but we managed to find it at the end. We have an engine mounting issue that, um, that we're probably going to fix in the next stage or next service. Um, so yeah, uh, not too serious, but we have to take it a bit easy. So yeah. About halfway through the first stage, we blew a front tyre, so stop changing a tyre. Um, it's lights on the cars now. Let's go for stage four and see where it takes us. Another dominant win for Habich and White, with Porsche and Fourier still leading class four. The regional results sees Jones and Breden come taking the stage win with Van Skalkweg and Vermark in fourth. Into the dark we go with Habich and White leading them out. They'd be followed by the Toyota Gazoo starlet of John van Beek and Ingrid Dietrich. Chris Kutzer and Matt Kohler still going well. They were in third place, and Manta Dekana and Kes Naidu limping along in the Gazoo Scarlet. National Rally Class 4 leaders Niels Foslu and Rikas Furi were looking confident as we get a taste of the onboard action with Jan Kretzmann and Jason Schreiber. Scary stuff indeed. This Toyota Etios has not missed a beat so far during the rally. Anton and Isabel Roth showing some good pace and running third in class four as well as sixth overall. Onto the regional class as we go and still setting the pace out front were Owen Jones and Aiden Bredenkamp in their Subaru. Davidson and Besate note in the one litre VW Polo had put in a solid effort thus far and were lying in third overall. Oliver Demand just overdoing it slightly, spinning into the corner in the loose gravel and taking a moment or two to get going in the right direction. Jody von Zumeren and James Johnson in the very well set up and maintained Datsun P510 Triple S currently in third place in class one. We go on board with Ross and Roxanne Bartle and that engine mounting starting to hamper their pace a little. Deceptive and flat right. Flat right 110, long flat left. They managed to finish down in 13th overall in stage four. He defended in Elgoa Rally Club champions Jean and Taryn van Rooyen in the Innova Polo with not only a misfire but alternator issues as well. <laughs> having rebuilt this car in record time and having no time for testing, jean Ray Marais and Tegan Talyard continued to impress. A somewhat cautious approach for Wade van Zumeren in the brand new four-wheel drive VW Polo finishing the stage in seventh place. Johan and Yene Fulyun with the hammer still down, storming to sixth in the stage and leading class three. Etienne Malherbe pushing to the limit and over, spins in the corner and then unfortunately stalls. He has to shut the banker spotlights down before being able to restart the car, costing them valuable seconds. That would see them end the stage in 12th place. <laughs> Rupert van Sale and Justin Gray were nursing mechanical issues and would limp home in 16th place on the stage. Herman Bernhard and Greg Hine were still going well and looked set for a possible podium finish in the clubman class. Francois van Mark and Andre van Skalkbeek in their giant killing Golf A1 were leading the clubman class and finished the stage in a very good 8th place overall. Saint Hell Toyota was still running like clockwork as they put it through its paces in the very rough terrain. <laughs> Winley Martin in the Daniel Pinar VW Polo's confidence was growing and he was lying second in class five. A broken toggle switch on the spotlights hampered the pace of rally debutants Kelly and Barnard as they finished the stage in 14th place. 
Yes, Tim and Morris Brown were still nursing their Subaru as they headed to a 17th place finish in stage four. The last of the runners was the Daniel Pinar Golf of Tashney Waite and Wesley Schultz, they are currently third in class five. At the last, uh, last left six, I underestimated how loose the gravel was and we had a close call almost over the ridge, but luckily it just the car pulled itself out of it and we managed to survive, so lucky one. That, that stage that we just did now, we, we really did push hard and the car did 100% well. The car was going nice, we were just, we're still taking it easy though, um, so yeah, but it was, it was lucky, we have been fun at least. The leaderboard after stage four was as follows, with Hapik and White continuing to dominate. Jones and Breden come still having the better of Oslo and Puri in the regional stand. Due to stage five being on private land, no spectators or even our cameras were allowed. So let's go on board with Ross and Roxanne Bartle and then Dion Kretzman and Jason Schreiber. Fast-paced action on stage five. This is what the leaderboards look like. Jones and Bredenkamp had a puncture and finished sixth, giving Oslo and Puri their first stage win of the rally. Onto the last stage of the rally we go, and it was a mere 700 meter dash to the finish, and Habeck was not holding back and would win the rally. The car's been been there for about two years that we've been developing it as we're going along. So, yeah, the car's built uh, around obviously what my dad feels is, is great and all the experience he's had, um, and obviously our driving style of the car is built around that as well. So, yeah, it's a very unique car and uh, very happy with how it's performing. Jono van Veek and Ingrid Gcox bringing the Gazoo Racing Toyota Scarlet home in style in second place. All in all, a good day. Some challenges as, as usual with with rallying and. Uh, we managed to get to the finish, which is the main thing, so we're happy. Consistency counts as Chris Kutzer and Matt Kohler finish in the Rally Technic Mazda 2 in third place. It's not all about just winning rallies, it's a championship at the end of the year to think about. And, uh, you know, it's always been our goal to finish every rally. So sometimes you've got to use your brains more than your, your heart. The final result sees Habich and White win their second event in a row, Foslu and Fouri winning Class 4 and Deman and Brady taking Class 5. In the regional rally standings, Jones and Bredenkamp deserved the overall win after a great performance across all six stages. Second overall and stretching their lead in the ARC 4 class, it was another classy performance from the Heller team of Niels Foslu and Rikas Fouri. Nick Davidson and Ashley Besait note adapted to the VW Polo well and ended in third overall and second in class one. The overall regional results for round three saw Johan and Yernave Pouljun win the ARC 3 class with Francois Femarck and André van Skalkweg taking ARC 5 as well as the Clubmans. Well folks, these are your winners of round five of the South African Rally Championship. We look forward to catching you in the next edition. We hope you enjoyed the show. From me, Brendan Kelly, it's goodbye until next time. The 2024 Elgoa National Rally was proudly brought to you by Petrofuel, Triple L Plant Hire, Toyota Gazoo Racing and the MTO Group.